process. For those of you who have never done this before with us, um, I've been doing this show for 11 years, mostly in the lobby of the public theater and also in uh, venues all over the world. And um, so thank you for the public theater for supporting me. A few years ago, HowlRound came on and helped us live stream. They are also helping us create this awesome community where we are doing it five days a week, Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Um, thank you for bo to both the public theater and HowlRound. So during this thing, we, uh, we write for 20 minutes together. We create the action of the show together. And then we create the dialogue of the show together where you will ask me questions about your work and your creative process. What we don't have the bandwidth for it, uh, in this setting is where I would offer you uh, specific critique and feedback of something that you're working on. But we can talk about your work and your creative process and that will give all of us um, a lot of encouragement and insight into our own work and our own creative process. So um, uh, yeah, so if you wanna ask a question or get in touch, uh, Audrey's gonna tell you how to do it. All right, so if you are in the Zoom class, what you need to do is click on the raise your hand button in order to ask a question. You'll see that in a participant tab in the likely the bottom hand of your screen if you are on a laptop or a top if you're on an iPad. Um, if you don't see it, please feel free to shoot me a, a text in the chat and I'll be uh, happy to help you out. Um, and then if you're watching uh, live on HowlRound.TV, what you can do is engage with us on social media. You can tweet at us um, on the public theater Twitter or on our Instagram, or you can tweet us at, at us at, at me work. Oh my gosh, Jesus. At watch me work SLB. Hashtag how round H O W L R O U N D. This was a tough one today, you guys. So glad you're here. Myself. I'm going to unmute myself. Okay. Thanks, Audrey. Thanks, um, moderators. Uh, you guys are great helping it happen. We're going to work for 20 minutes and uh, yeah, I'm looking out the window. There's someone doing push-ups in the grass. Okay. He's doing his work and he will do ours. Here we go. Dang.
All right. That was 20 minutes. Yay. Okay. Now, if anybody has any questions for the next 40 minutes or so, we'll take, uh, we'll talk about your work and your creative process. Does anybody? Yep. We've got Isaiah has got a question. All uh, right. Isaiah, where are go you? Go for it. Hi, SLP. Um, hey. Hey, how are you? I'm well. Good to see Good. you. Good to see you. Um, so I, my question is about, so yesterday I watched um, Jeremy O'Harris, the guy who wrote play, um, he had a, he through New York Theater Workshop had a, um, like a master class thing uh, that was called, it was titled, um, it was titled Dramaturgies for Dystopias 101. Uh, and he was talking about like writing plays and, and making plays where um, we might not be able to gather in theater spaces, um, like writing for this sort of world that we live in now. And I, it made me think of this show um, as a space that sort of could only operate on, I mean, this version of this show on Zoom, which is operating outside of a theater. And I'm currently working on a play um, and I want to like, I don't know, try to mess around with the world of the play or with the, the, mode of, the modes of storytelling that I use um, in, in the construction of the world of the play um, to somehow speak to this like dystopic moment or like explore um, sort of non-hierarchical. Like I really love how, like when we are writing here, for example, if someone were to walk in, there would be very, there would be zero indication of like who's leading who's the director, who's the organizer. It's just like a bunch of flat panels of faces writing. Um, and I love that. I love the non-hierarchical system of this show and of other similar things I've been taking, taking part in. My question, I guess, is just like um, about like reconciling the, the desire for like a, creating a piece that like imagines slash embodies that like future not like less hierarchical more democratic structure of a theater space while also like um i don't know like main i feel having never necessarily like seen the things that i'm trying to write there's like less of a clear referent and a clear um yeah thing to refer back to uh to to know what i'm what i'm doing um so question would just be about like reconciling that. If that is, does that make sense? Um, I love everything you said. I but I don't understand you. The question would be reconciling what? Exactly? Reconciling like how to um, how to write a play, or yeah, because I'm writing how to write a play um, that imagines this this new no, new understand some new understanding of a theater. When we, when I don't know what that is, when the, when I don't know what that looks like, um, like how to write for a world that I don't know what that world is going to look or feel or sound like, but I, but I feel like myself in it right now. Does that make? I don't. Yeah. So write about the world you're in right now. I mean, I mean, you, you how to, how to write about a world that, how to write about a world that I don't know what it's going to be like. Sure. I mean, that, I mean, it's a, you know, life is an act of faith, you know, going forward is an act of faith. So how to write about, I mean, even, even if we take it back to say, I don't know, November, or whatever, last November when things were, you know, the, the worst part of it was, yeah, I have to go home for Thanksgiving and see my parents and I didn't vote for the same people they did or what, you yeah. know, that was what everybody was talking about. Um, but how to write for a world then, you know, how to write, how to write a play. No, maybe you're not sure it's going to get done. Maybe you're not sure it's going to be received well, you know? So there's, there's always, it's interesting that you we're, you know, so many of us are seeing uncertainty now, you know, hello. Uncertainty has been around for a long time and it's an act of, I guess uh, it's an indication of privilege if we're just seeing it now, do you know what I mean? So yes. uncertainty and what, you know, what am I going to do? And, oh no, that's been around 
for a long time. So it's good that you're, you know, seeing it now and asking questions like, how do I write for a world that I don't even know what it's going to be? Right. Are you putting the time in? You know, are you, are you putting the however much, 20 minutes, you know, is a good place to, you know, a good benchmark if that's hard or difficult, you know, 10 minutes is good, you know, a daily practice. You know, th there's some things that, that don't need to be thought of, thought about too much. You know, are you putting the time in? Are you writing things? Are you, are you sitting down with your notebook or your computer or whatever and, and writing? Are you doing that, Isaiah? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm taking this class where I, um, I, have, I have to write 10 pages a week. Great. Um, yeah, so I've been doing that for the past month or so. Great, and you're, you're writing every day? Most days, yeah. Okay, well, try, well, that's what I mean, try writing every day. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's like, how do we do anything? We act as if. It's, it's what, the tools that we've always employed. And now maybe okay. we're just realizing that, ah, oh, I guess I have to use that, that mantra that my grandmother used, keep on keeping on. Ain't nobody going to turn me around. Maybe those are useful, you know? Maybe the old people don't have to die off like a lot of people are suggesting <laughs> for things to get back on their feet. Maybe we just need to start listening to them, yeah. you know? So I, I mean, I think it, it, it's like you want you, it sounds like you want some kind of insurance, you know? So this is what the world's going to look like in 2021. And so write a play that's going to work for that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So and I, it, and I, and yeah. okay. And so, but with not knowing what that what that is right about exactly like, right right. Okay. right. Yeah. You don't. You know. You know that that the, the same concerns you have right now are the same concerns that keep people from writing plays, or that keep regional theaters from programming plays with black people in them. I don't know if people are going to come to that. So we better not, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. a kind of, you want an assurance of success. And we, we don't, we who live and who work in, in, in our soldiers in the realm of the spirit uh, have to, to some extent, let go of that. Okay. This, is, this is part of the creative act. You have to go, you have to go out on faith. And this, you have to show up on faith every day you know and no amount of thinking <laughs> you know it's like a crab trying to get its cl its claws around the universe no amount of thinking or fancy language is going to you know it's going to get you through you got to just sit down and do the work and it sounds like you're doing the work which is awesome just keep doing the work and you know i say a worst case scenario you have a play that doesn't get performed oh well yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. You'll find a way. You'll find a way to do it, right? You, right? You, you, the work. You will find a way to do it. But if you sit back and go, I don't know what to write because yeah. I don't know what kind of world we're going to be in. So I want to make sure. Right. Okay. Right, write your play. Write your novel. Write your poem. Write your song. Write your whatever. Make the blueprints to your house or whatever it is that you're doing. You know, everybody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, thank okay. you. You're welcome. Good question, Isaiah. Thank you. Thank you, Isaiah. Um, next, we have Jennifer. Jennifer, can you hear us? Yes. Hi. Um, hey, Jennifer. So, hey, it's so great to be here. Thank you so much for doing this. It's it's just tremendous of you. So thank you. Thank you for being. You've got the Aurora Borealis in the background. Yeah, Jennifer. I find it calming and my, my <laughs> apartment is kind of messy. So a little bit of both. That's um, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so my question is, I um, I wrote and um, performed in a solo show about growing up with the birthmark a number of years ago. It was about 40 minutes long. And it was actually a thesis for a drama therapy program. It was like part of that. Um, so it was ver for a very small audience, maybe, I don't know, 50 people or something. Um, and then I sort of left it there. Um, and it comes back up in my like consciousness every now and then. And I'm, I'm in a memoir class now. And uh, I'm also the memoir is about 
like it's kind of about both like now it's more than one thing because my parents passed in the last five years so there's this huge grief from that and um and then there's the collective grief of what's happening now but that's you know um and then there's growing up with the birthmark and which is ultimately about acceptance right um i don't want to go on too long with my explanation <laughs> but um so as i'm writing this memoir uh this the one the show is coming up and the characters from the show are coming up and I'm like, okay, how can I sort of bring it into the memoir? And also I know that the other side of it is, I know I'm gonna wanna perform this show again, hopefully in New York City, which is where I live now. I, I used to live in, um, I'm from New York, but I, when I performed the show before it was in San Francisco. Um, so that's that's my question. It's kind of, was it help? Was it clear? <laughs> like, enough well let's see so um first of all i'm, I'm really sorry that your parents passed um, you. so recently um, i'm really sorry to hear that and um our hearts go out to you and thanks for being here with us today um so you have a solo show that you've performed you've written and performed yeah. and you also now you're writing a memoir and there's some overlap is that yes that a, okay there's some overlap and you'd like to uh put some of the characters from the show, include them in the memoir. Is that correct? Yes, um, which I've started to do, maybe write about, because this, the even the process of creating the solo show had a very big impact on my life. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it just did. This was over 10 years. Uh -huh. Okay, so but the question is how to incorporate the, the characters from the solo show into the memoir? Is that? Um, I think, it's kind of that. And also, I think I do eventually want to revisit the solo show. And like, part of me is wanting to work on both, which um, might not be, I, I, I've heard from you before, like work on one thing if you can. Um, I'm, but I kind of want to work on both. Mm -hmm. Well, just to clarify, I say work on one thing at a time. Right, okay. So if you've got two hours of writing time in the morning, you work on one project, you can have two hours of writing time in the afternoon to work on another project. Those of us, and there are many of us who work on many projects at once. Oh, okay. So Sorry. yeah, so you can work on yeah. 100 projects at, at a time, at, you know, during the course of a week. You just have to, it, for me, it's more effective when I choose what project I'm working on right now. Right, right now, mm -hmm. I'm gonna watch me work. I'm not doing anything else, you see? And yeah. then at six, I'll be doing something else. Um, but um, I think, well, number one, totally work on both if you want, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to work on both. Um, but I, 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 I feel like if you've got the, the solo show already written then, and you're in a memoir class, you did say that, right? Right now? Yes. Yes. Why don't you focus on the, the memoir since the, there's overlap mm -hmm. and you'll have the satisfaction at the end of the class or as the class progresses of having written something new which is a really good feeling you know how that feeling goes you know yeah. and mm -hmm. you'll have you know you're in that class for a reason it's gonna it sounds like it's a wonderful opportunity to get some really cool work done um you can always after you've have a, a draft of your memoir you can go back and sort of you know work on your solo show but it might be a good time to just focus on your memoir it's scary um writing uh, new things and sometimes we go, oh, I think maybe maybe I'll I'll revisit that old, that old thing because okay. you know, okay. yeah, yeah. But but I, I would suggest um, writing your memoir, and you might find you know just you probably find all kinds of new things to to tell you know and say, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you can totally bring in. Um, sorry, the sun is 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 on. You can totally bring in characters from your solo mm -hmm. show into your memoir. Mm -hmm. I mean. It's your yeah. stuff. It's your material. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Thanks for that. It's a good reminder. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they can, and they can be very much alike at the end of the day. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, one can inform the other. And um, yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, next, we've got Karima. Are you there? Oh, hold on. I I'm muted. Oh, there you, you are. Hi. Okay. Hey, hey Karina. Hi, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Thanks for asking. I have a question. 
It may not be as deep question, but I have I have a question. I find when I'm writing, I have to go back before I can go forward. Um, especially when I'm doing, if I'm doing um, like a, a short story, it's not, I don't have to do that. But when I'm working on plays, which I enjoy working on a lot more, I find that when I stop, I, it's hard for me just to keep going right away. I have to go back and look at everything and restate and state it to go forward. And that, I'm wondering if, if that's not a good thing to do or should I just keep writing no matter what and just let whatever come out comes out even if it goes kind of off a little bit? I hear you. So when you're writing um, and when you write short stories, this happens less. I'm just repeating to make sure I, I heard it right because the, the connection was kind of right. funny. Um, so when you're writing a short story, you don't have to do it as much. But when you're writing a play, which you which is very enjoyable, you write some and then you have to go back yeah. and um, yeah, before you can go forward. But uh, Karima, is that that you have to go back and rewrite before you go forward? Or you have to go back and reread? What is going back? What does that look like? I have to go back and reread. Oh, oh, that's, how, uh, how often do you work on it, Karima? Well, even if I work on it every day, you know, I find that for some reason I have to start at the beginning before I go on. I do go on, but I have to go back. It's not like I don't keep writing, but I have to go back and, and, and pick up that um, the energy of the flow of my characters as they're speaking. I think that's, I mean, it's, it's funny. Sometimes people ask questions that are like totally fine if that's your thing, you know? Okay. If that's your thing, Karima, then cool. What's great is that you go back to reread and that gives you kind of a running start, get, get you warmed up in a way, and then you can go forward. It sounds like it's working. Um, the, the, the fact that you asked the question um, makes me wonder, do you, do you feel it's a problem? Does it get in the way? Does it get in the way of your writing time? Do you spend so much time rereading that you only have three minutes to write because you have, you know, this, is it, why is it problematic or is it problematic? It's not that it's just in my way, but you always keep hearing you should just keep writing and let it come out and let it come out and let it come out. And I don't really write that way. So I kind of wonder, you know, should I be trying to write that way? I understand. I understand, Karima. Um, I, yeah. And I've often said when someone says they write a, a first scene of their novel or the first chapter of their novel, and then they're about to write the second chapter and they want to go back and rewrite the first chapter first. When they go back to rewrite and get it perfect before they move forward, that can create a, um, a, a difficulty in getting the work done. There are plenty of writers who do that, but I always suggest just go forward and, and sort it out when you have a full draft. But, but some writers rewrite it and get it perfect and then they'll rewrite the second chapter and get it perfect. And by the end, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a complete, completed thing. Um, but I certainly think if you need to reread before you get going, kind of give yourself a warm up, that's fine. Yeah. I think as long as you, as long as you keep going, that's fine. Again, there, there are not a lot of rules. There are tools. And so, you know, if, if you're doing something that works for you and you're getting your writing done, I would say that works for you. When it becomes problematic, then we can talk about options, but sounds okay. like it's working. Sounds like it's yeah, working it great. Yeah, it works, it works for me. But great. I just want to because you hear so many different things. Yes, especially these days. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you, Karima. Um, next, we've got Timothy. Timothy, are you Hello. here? Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, Hi, Timothy. Thanks for, thank you. Hi. My first time on here. Thanks for having me on. 
Uh, you sort of broached this when you were talking to Jennifer, but um, I figure I'll ask anyway, and we talk about it a little more. Where do you come down on working on several things at the same time? Because uh, I'm in a situation where I've got, for the first time, I've got two or three different projects at various stages, and now I've had, um, since we've all been under quarantine, uh, a couple of friends of mine, who, <clears throat> excuse me, who are directors, uh, have asked to approach me to write them stuff, and I don't want to turn anything down. Um, and, you know, I should always have such problems, but I was just wondering where, you know, where you came down on the issue of um, working on several things at the same time, or the, you know, is it something you do, something you not do? Um, I, I, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be helpful at all if I said no. You're only allowed. Thou shalt only. There is only one God, and it's the project the, in first position, and you're not allowed to. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous, and it's um. It's it's again it's it's not suited to what you're going through right now. So we got to mm -hmm. find something that's going to be more effective. Um, what I do often, someone's driving fast. What I do often is I I I help I encourage people to become mindful because some people will start you know they'll start one project and they'll they'll write they'll write you know and then they'll. Ugh. Get to page three and go mm, that's hard L let me start another one uh, get to page four and then that's hard and then let me start another one and let me go back to the one the one that i had last year and you know so okay and i just that can create confusion and you're not getting anything done okay but if you're committed to working on each project to some sort of place of completion right which it sounds like you are so say you have three projects to work on, just say, right? Um, now putting aside the ones that your friends have asked you to write just for a minute, okay? So you have three projects that are already in the air. You know, like they're airplanes. We, have you ever, you know, you've been in a plane and you look over there and there's a plane going by and it's like, zoom, you're like, shit. It's, on, it's in another lane, right? It's like maybe 300 miles away. It looks close, but it's like far away, right? Um, more than one plane can be in the air and you're, air traffic control, mm. right? So maybe in the morning you work on project number one mm. for two hours or three hours, okay? And then you take a little mm. break or whatever. And then, and then for the next two hours, you work on project number two, okay? And then for the next two hours, and then you take a little pause and then for the next couple of hours or whatever, or even an hour, you can switch it up. You work on project mm -hmm. number three, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's one day, that's how you would, you would, uh, divide one day of, of work, for example. Or you can do it uh, in groups of days. Monday and Tuesday, I'm gonna work on project number one. Wednesday and Thursday, I'm gonna work on project number two. Friday and Saturday, project, you know, like that. Okay, you can bounce, or, or Monday is project number one, Tuesday. You see what I mean? You can divide up your time as you please. The calendar by hours in a day, or by days of the week, or by weeks. Week one, I'm working on project number one. Week two, I'm Okay, um, think of it as a, I love the a lazy Susan, you know, or dim sum, you know, you have the things spinning yeah. around and so you mm -hmm. have your project and you work on it a little bit and then you turn the wheel and you work on another project and you turn the wheel and you work on another project. Okay, and you can get a lot of work done that way. Um, mm -hmm. What's important is that you're committed to finishing all the projects and you're not jumping from one project to another as an avoidance technique. You know, huh, okay. you, you, want, you know what I'm saying? You wanna, I do. Yeah. You know, it's, okay. It's a way of not thinking about something else. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes we do that, but if you, mm -hmm. if that becomes part of your habit and you're not finishing anything, mm -hmm. then it's not going to be satisfying. It's only going to create a, a sense of like, oh shit, I can't get anything done. You see what I'm saying? And I if do. that starts to happen, maybe you need to just just focus on one project, you know, maybe. Right. Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like you're going to get a lot done. Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome so much, Timothy. Thanks, Timothy. Um, next, we have Laura. Oh, hold on. All right, Laura, are you unmuted? Having a 
for a time. Okay. There she goes. Oh, hi. Hey, Laura. Okay. Yay. Hi, Laura. Uh, thank you so much for this. I've been doing this. You created a warm community, both you and Audrey. And it's made me very disciplined. And I look forward to this. And you're my therapist now. Okay. <laughs> Without a license. So I don't have a doing... license, though. I don't have a license. <laughs> Your check will be in the mail. Okay. <laughs> Um, I've been doing a little stand-up and I'm writing for new material, okay? I want to use stand-up for, um, to talk about race in America. And I've written a joke and some people think it's funny and other people think it's offensive because they don't know where I'm coming from, you know? I'm just wondering when you write your material on, you know, in race, um, does the audience become part of your process when you're writing or do you just write creatively and then forget it and just do editing at the end? That's a great question, Laura. And I'm so glad you're doing stand-up. More women in stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, the Chinese Eartha kid. Oh, right. Oh, right on. Right on. Okay. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, it's a, it's a combination of the, of the two things. Sure. I just write, hey, hey, hey. Could you be quiet, please? Thanks. My child is talkative. Mm -hmm. um, I just write, but then when you put it in front of an audience, you go, ah, oh, you know, they're they're la or you know, they're laughing at that, and it wasn't a joke. It happens to mm -hmm. me sometimes. Oh no, Ooh, you know. So the audience is very much a part of the creative process, but I don't write. Let's see if I can do it here. Oh, so here you are writing on your computer. I don't write by, say the audience is back there. Right? I don't write looking over my shoulder, wondering what the mm -hmm. audience is going to think. That's very different from writing what I want. And then when it's a, a show, but especially if you're doing stand-up, you're going to try out your routine many times and stand-up uh, comedians work very much like that. You know, oh, that one didn't fly. That one really landed that one died, you know, they're always, you guys are always working with the audience to sort of make your act, to improve your act, right? So it's a constant collaborative mm -hmm. experience at that point, you know? So I would say, write your stuff and then you gotta, you gotta get out, you know, you'll get out there in front of people, even if, whether it's this format or, you know, I mean, not this show, but whether it's an online format or, you know, you get out there and you'll get a response. Great, thank yeah, you. It's great, thank you. Thank you, Laura. Um, next we have Catherine. Hi, oh, oh, sorry, hi. can you hear me? Oh, hi, okay, okay, sorry, child, child in the room. Um, uh, my question is about taking critique. I, I, I workshopped and was able to finish a, the first draft of a pilot and got comments uh, from uh, folks in the industry. And my, you know, how do you incorporate comments that you receive and critique while still maintaining your own voice and also the, you know, the through line and enthusiasm for the story that you want to tell? I find that when I come back to, you know, I'm doing the revisions now, and when I come back to some of the comments and I'm incorporating them, it, it, it's not that they change the, sometimes it does, it, it changes kind of the, the feel of things for me. And I'm trying to, you know, keep things, keep the story that I want to tell um, and the way that I want to tell it. And that's, that's not, you know, disregarding the technical uh, notes that I need to incorporate, but. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, notes. Yeah. Um, the, uh, taking notes is always a real challenge. It's, it's almost a, a craft art form in itself, you know? And I have this, uh, this mantra and it gets me through these note sessions and it sometimes surprises the, the givers of notes. And I say, yeah, all, every note is gonna make this better. And they look at me, <laughs> really, you know? <laughs> Every, yeah, every note is going to make it better. Thanks for these notes. These are great notes. Great. No, do I take them all? No, you know, mm -hmm. but the attitude of the notes are going to make it better is helpful for me. Okay. In my writing process, 
It helps me not be resistant to the notes because there might be two or three notes in there that are really good. Uh, there's also a saying, it's not the note, it's how you take it. Okay, mm -hmm. which, is, which yeah. has been very helpful wow. to me. You know what I mean? Uh, so mm -hmm. you basically, um, uh, if, some, if someone says, um, do you always have to wear black? And if I take it like, oh no, that means I have to wear, you know, a lot of poochie <laughs> or a lot of colorful things all the time, you know? Or does that mean something else? It's, it's not, hold on, child in the room, quiet please. It's, it's how you take the note always. The, my other question for you mm -hmm. is who are the people giving you these notes? Are they the people who commissioned your work or what? Uh, no, it's uh, it was a workshop through Sundance. And so they have people that are already in the industry. So there are people that are working right now on shows. They might be sh uh, uh, showrunners and writers themselves and actually writers that are in the writing room giving me notes. And they're great notes. You know, I'm just trying to keep it, keep it mine in a sense. Um, there was one session of notes that were more from peers and that was a little bit, that was a little different. It was there turned out to be more just formatting stuff, you know, it was no big deal. Um, you know, and some, then the notes are really, I mean, yeah, they're great, you know, but it is changing, you know, some of the things that the kind of the trajectory in some sense of the story. So, I mean, there's another saying, it's take what you like and leave the rest. You know, mm -hmm. if you've written down the notes, and I'm assuming you've, you've recorded them in some fashion, right? Yeah, I have. Right? Elements, okay, great. Yeah. So you can go through, you can print out the, the document, circle the notes that resonate with you. It might, they might have given you 20 notes, maybe only three resonate with you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then maybe spend some time thinking about how you might, how you might implement those. The ones that don't resonate with you, let them wait a while. Pause. You know, maybe mm -hmm. in a month, maybe then you, you've done the notes, you've done a rewrite. Pause, maybe, you know, work on another project, put it, let it cool. Then maybe come back and read the notes again. Maybe mm -hmm. one more might resonate with you. You know, maybe not. Yeah. You know, take the ones that work. And, and for right now, don't take the ones that don't. What I'm saying, what I, that's the way around of saying you're not working for these people, they're not right. paying you. Okay, so right now you just just be true to the thing that you want to see on the page. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. When I work for people and they say we really want to see you know Gumby run in the room or whatever, you know, and, and they're, they're if they're paying me, they want to see Gumby. They might see Gumby. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and but that's yeah. not a yeah. To me, that is not a compromise of my creative spirit. That's me being hired to do a job. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. So, so a I'm hired to do a job to write them something that they like, and we're working collaboratively on it, and they mm -hmm. really, 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 really want something. And I'm going to find a way to deliver. Yeah. Because in that way, I'm more of a, you know, I'm, I'm a hired gun, I'm a chef. You know what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? So it's a different kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, right yeah. now at Sundance, it's yours. Take their notes. Their notes should help you make it better. You should feel that. If you don't yeah. you feel like this is taking me into a whole nother story and all that, then put it on pause. Don't don't take the note just mm -hmm. yet. Maybe it'll resonate in six months. Maybe not. Yeah. Either way, I'm sure you, like you said, you love the notes. You appreciate the yeah. notes. You know? Okay. Take what you like and leave the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Good question, yeah. Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. Um, we've got about three minutes left. So we're going to, up next is Hassan. You ready? Oh, hi. 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 Hi, hi, hi SLP. Uh, thank you so much for this. It's so wonderful. Oh. I've been following it all these, all these days, and they've been really motivating. Oh, thank you, Hassan. Um, I have an, uh, this is my second question. So uh, I, I, um, I wanted to ask you, I have a play uh, that I've been sort of scared by. It's a big commission. It's, uh, it's got over 20 characters. It's an adaptation of a Persian uh, love poem. Uh, and um, it's sort of the first time somebody's doing it in an English uh, version of it. Uh, and it's got some songs in it and so on. And I had, I had a workshop uh, about a couple of years ago with a I've been I've been working on this on and off because I've had to do other projects in between just to kind of survive, 
but I've also been a bit scared of it. So I've had I've had a, a other projects. I had a, a workshop with a dramaturg, and she gave me some notes. And um, and now I'm coming back to it. I've left it for a while, uh, but so I'm looking at it afresh, and I'm doing what you've suggested, which is uh, read the whole thing, make a make a note of when you're engaged with the text, and make a note of when you're getting bored or something seems flat. And I've identified pockets of writing that are a bit flat. So I. What I'm stuck on is my next step. How do I deal with that? Is it, uh, I clearly haven't probably gone in depth in the characters enough. Uh, maybe that's, that's one of the issues. Uh, uh, do I, should I go back to the original source material? I've read them a couple of times. I've read the book a couple of times. Is that helpful? What would you suggest as a kind of, once you identify the pockets that are not working, what to do about them? That's great. Oh, what a beautiful project, Hassan, it sounds like. It sounds gorgeous. Um, so you, you've identified the places where that you love, right? Yeah. In your, and you've identified the places that eh, you don't love so much yet. Okay. Yeah. Um, have you asked yourself, why isn't this gelling? Have you asked yourself that? You know, like this part I don't love. What's not working? It reads flat a little bit, or it reads, it reads, um, a bit dense, uh, something about the energy of the piece dropping a little mm -hmm. bit in these mm -hmm. places. Uh -huh. uh, and can you be, and can you just with yourself, as you're sort of being your own dramaturg, you know, can you with yourself articulate why? Do you think there's, do you think it doesn't have enough of the source material in it? Do you think you haven't gone deep enough with the character? Do you think you've kind of skimmed over the story point that might, that it might have been? Uh, you know, carving out. Do you see what I'm or, saying? Yes, mm -hmm. perhaps. Or, or maybe I've taken too long to get one little point across. Okay. Maybe there's too much dialogue. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But those kinds of things. But that's the thing. If you you identify the parts that aren't working as well, and then you say, well, why not? Why aren't they working as well? Okay. And that can lead you to your next step. You know. If it's, if it's not quite in tune with the source material, then I would say reread the source material. Um, if it's not, the character isn't developed enough, then I would say go deeper and, and, and develop the character. If you think you're taking too long to, to, have, to have to tease a, a moment out, then I would say, how can you cut it down? And maybe it's long, like a big rope that's just flopping around, you know, blah, blah, like that. And you want it to be like that, yeah. you know? So you're gonna trim a little bit. Can I trim to get it? you know, taught, yeah. right? Maybe that's, maybe that's um, something. You can also, are you working with the dramaturg still or are they? No, they've, okay. Uh, okay. yeah, no, no. Okay. They've moved on to another company now. Okay, 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 that's okay. That's okay. So, um, are, but it's a commission you said, correct? Yeah, it is, yeah. So is there someone in the community that commissioned the play one of the yes, producers. that is that is an there is an uh, the head dramaturg is taking over. Okay. So I I had asked her to read that draft, but okay. she seems very very busy, uh, and she's she's dealing with uh, with a lot of writers. Sure, uh, sure, sure, yeah. sure, 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 sure. So I um, I just uh, I thought I'll have a go at yes. writing. Um, because I have I have an idea of, of rewrite a major rewrite, uh -huh. but I'm now doing a smaller rewrite, just keeping the story I already have, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. and trying to expand on that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do the smaller rewrite first, definitely, and just look at the sections that aren't working and ask yourself why. You know, and maybe come up with two or three answers. You see what I mean? And if you're going to reread uh, the source material, reread just the part that's specific to that section that you're adapting. Right. Yeah, right. just limit it. I don't want you to get lost in the source material again. Yeah, yeah. You've read it a couple of times. Just reread that that those couple of pages, maybe. Get yeah, up yeah. on your feet, maybe. Write standing up. Right. You've ever tried that? You know, get the action. Yeah. Get yeah, get the get the um, activity in your body, you know, right. move around, talk it out to yourself. Um, and and when you do connect uh, back with that dramaturg, they will be so impressed. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. these are great suggestions. Yes. No, thank you. Great yeah, question, great. though. Great. Thank great you. Question. Great. Thank you.
Well, it is 6.03. Let's do it again tomorrow. Wednesday. Let's do it April again 15th. tomorrow Wednesday. April 15th. April 15th. Yeah. Um, as a reminder, in order to sign up for the Zoom class, all you need to do is go to publictheater.org by 3 p.m. Eastern time every single day, and you can sign up there, and I will send you a link between 3 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, and you know, can always just watch on howround.tv as well. We'll see you there. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, folks. Thank see you tomorrow. You. Bye. Bye.